Hello and welcome back on my YouTube channel, Part Doshi, Learning by Doing. So today in this video, we are going to see one of the very interesting concept of UiPath apps and a new integration we can see. So till now we have seen we can integrate data surveys, we can integrate storage buckets, as you can see some of the videos that I've uploaded. It is UiPath apps and data surveys, then it is storage brackets. We have integration service also coming up. Then we can integrate UiPath processes. But now there is something more interesting and new in UiPath apps, which is about integrating your orchestrator queues. Now that really helps when you want to directly add a data to your queue. Now you might be wondering that how is it advantage to us or what difference does it make from what we were doing previously. So previously, when we did not have the direct integration, what we used to do was, we used to take the data from the text fields or any fields that we are selecting on UiPath apps, and then we used to create a process on a click of a submit button or any other trigger. We used to call that process through assistant, it executes and then it adds data to the queue. So this makes it really very, very complex procedure. But now, it is really amazing. You just have to create an app, bind your queue values or the data that you want to add to your queue in the UiPath app fields and that's it. You are done and the data will be inserted into the queue. So let's see how we can do that. I have created a very simple app. As you can see, there is only a single container. Now, what we are going to do is first we are going to see where is the option to add a queue? Now I'm going to click on plus, and I'm going to click on queue. That is where we have the option. I'm going to click on next. Now, if you see there is one note added over here, only specific queues with specific data JSON schema will be available for selection. The system is set to read from, that is my tenant name. If you don't find the queue, you need to you need in this tenant, pick a different tenant. So it's like if you have multi-tenants orchestrator, here it's very simple. Now, if you see, I'm not able to see any queues even if I have some created. Why is that? Because now when we create queue, we have an option to import a specific data JSON schema. Now I have never created a queue which has that schema. So now we are going to see how we can create that schema and then we are going to create a queue which has a specific data JSON schema. Now, why we need this over here is when you will create your fields in apps, you do not know in which queue item the data should go. So when we insert a queue data, we have multiple fields that we extract using transaction dot specific content in our process. So to do that mapping of queue items or the queue transaction values which are there, with your app fields, we need this JSON schema to be defined so that you can map them easily within UiPath app like any other variable that we use to use it. So there is this JSON schema that you can see. The upper part will be constant. We can change this to apps schema, right? You can change this. And in the properties, you can add whatever values you are going to create the fields for in your UiPath app. So we are going to do the similar thing. Now, this is something that you will get from UiPath documentation as well. If you see over here, I'm just going to add this in the description as well, referencing the queue in your app. So you don't have to worry about it. There is completely do complete documentation available. There is replacing the queue as well. There are many different things which we'll cover in the further videos. But here, this is just an introductory video to this integration that we have in UiPath. So now let's go ahead and create a queue. I'm going to name it as apps queue. Here, if you see specific data JSON schema, the same thing which was mentioned in UiPath. I'm going to select this import and I'm going to click on add. That's it. Now my queue is created. Now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to close this, click on plus, go to queue, click on next and in my model, I'm going to find my queue. And you see, these are the three things that we have created. If you see over here, name is permanent and age. So let's click on add. 
So it is just connecting my queue and I can see it over here in my queue. So if I click on input, I can see the three inputs as well. Now I'm going to click on main. I'm going to go over here and let's start creating our app quickly. So we have three things, right? It is name, is permanent and age. Add new control. Text box. Then new label. Is permanent. No. Yes, let's use switch maybe. Yep. So we can delete this label over here. Okay, now we are left with one thing, which is a button, click on sub. Okay, so now I've created my app fields, that is the UI fields. Now I have to map my queue items, my JSON schema with all of them. So I'm going to click over here. In queues, I can see its name. I'm going to just drag and drop over here. That has to happen in value by is permanent value binding. I'm going to drag this, put this over here because it is a Boolean value. In age, I'm going to go over here, select this, going to put value. Binding. Now, I have created my app. We have seen how to create a JSON schema. Now, what I'm going to do is create a rule and insert the data to the queue. Create rule. And you see here is an option, add to queue. Click over here, just pass it. Now, why I have to pass just this object is because the values are automatically getting bound over there. So when successfully added, let me show a message. Success, copy, and we are going to do the same. Success. Show a message. Failed. Let me copy this. Let me paste it over here. It is going to be an error. Save now. Okay. Let me close this now. And let's preview our app. Hopefully, it should work as expected. And we should see the output. So name is going to be part. Age is going to be 23. I'm going to leave it as false. You click on submit. And yes. We can see a success message. So let's go and refresh this and see if we have something over here. Okay, the revision is none. Let's view details. If you see name part is permanent false because we did not select anything, age is 20. Now I'm going to run it one more time. I'm going to put again part, but this time I'm going to select this and click on submit. And yes, it is successful again. So let's refresh this. We have new data, view details. And if you see, is permanent is true. So the Boolean variable type, the numerical type, everything seems to be working very, very well. So this is how you can just simply integrate your UiPath apps with orchestrator queues. And then you can have a queue based trigger for your process. So when and data is added through apps, you can just simply execute your process on a server machine or something like that. So that is one of the use case. We will see that kind of complete process as well, where after a queue item is added, we are getting a data and the process is getting executed. So that let's consider as a part two of this particular video that we have. But in part one, we have seen how to create a JSON schema, how to bind the queue with variables with your app variables and how to successfully add the data to the queue. Thank you so much for watching the complete video. 
please do sub consider subscribing my youtube channel if you like the content and see you soon in the next video thank you